Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. Carbon here with a tutorial of sorts in regards to the procedure that gives DCS Viper pilots the most grief, and that's boar sighting those pesky mavericks. This video is recorded with a new patch, we will call it the famous multi-threading patch, and that came out early this March. Open beta of course. Right now I'm starting the jet up as quick as possible, not following procedures, as the goal is to get in the air as fast as possible to do this demonstration. Once in the air, I will demonstrate what I think is the easiest way to bore sight the Mavericks. We are in a cold jet because the Mavericks at this point are not bore sighted, whereas in a hot or air start they would be, and that would kind of defeat the purpose of this video. So why bore sight in the air? Well, that's a good question. It comes down to a little concept called parallax. Now, what is parallax, you might ask? Parallax, as defined, is the effect whereby the position or direction of an object, in our case a target, appears to differ when viewed from different positions. So why does this matter for bore sighting? Here we have a diagram to help visually aid in describing parallax. Picture viewpoint A as a maverick on station 3, so left wing. Our targeting pod, which is on station 5 right cheek, is on the right side of our jet and will be viewpoint B. Object is a target roughly half a nautical mile away, that we are using to bore sight on. So everything is all well and bore sighted to what is essentially a half nautical mile. Imagine now we are getting ready to do our run-in on a shore red, short range air defense, such as an SA-9, and we really want that eight nautical mile lock that our Maverick can give us. Well, as we slave our targeting pod over to the shore red, you will notice the Maverick is now looking off to the right, off the target, and thus cannot be automatically handed off via the targeting pod will have a broken cross if you do. Now referring back to the visual aid, just move object left or right, which is closer or further in relation to viewpoint B's line of sight to demonstrate this scenario. Keeping that angle created at bore sight in mind, move viewpoints B line of sight to intercept the new object. If the object was moved further, viewpoint A looks more right, and if moved closer, viewpoint A looks more left. Bore sighting in a nutshell, is setting an angle from a target relative to your targeting pod and weapon. The object can be closer or further, but the angle remains the same, and that's where we get our deviations. So to counter this, we want to do a bore sight on an object roughly 6 nautical miles away to 8. We want a bore sight close to our max lock range, as we don't care about error at 2 nautical miles, because after all, Mavericks are standoff weapons. So with that all being said, it would be incredibly difficult to find anything on the ground six nautical miles away to bore sight on, even four nautical miles away, and this is why it is preferred to do it in the air. In the air, we can find a target 10 to 20 nautical miles out, prepare our targeting pod on it, and work out the situational awareness in the Maverick camera as to where it is looking at. We have plenty of time, and I think folks mostly avoid air bore sighting due to a fear of too little time. With patience and practice, it does get easy and fast. So right now we'll go ahead, take off, and we'll get airborne and reference tier point one to where we will go ahead and start our bore sighting procedure.
Alright, so we are referencing steer point 1 as our bore site location. This location can be a steer point or somewhere in your route. It can be a vehicle, building, antenna, etc. as long as you can get a contrast lock. Keep in mind with a low field of view, doing buildings or objects in cities can lead to confusion correlating between the Maverick Seeker and the targeting pod. First, we will place our master arm to sim, or arm if you want to be spicy, and then set our targeting pod to auto, as this is the whole point of the video. Accurate auto handoff. We then go over to our weapon page and turn the Maverick from Viz to Pre so that handoff can occur. I will take the targeting pod out of Snowplow and then TMS aft to cursor 0 to our steer point 1. I will now snap to narrow field of view with my expand FOV button that is located on the stick as we are 18 nautical miles out and scan the area around the steer point for a high contrast object like this vehicle up here. I then soy back to my weapons page and zoom in my Mavericks for a better sight picture. This is also done by the expand FOV button and then nose wheel steering button to cycle to the next match brick. Rinse and repeat until all four are done. Also would be a good time to play with brightness and contrast for your screens. I rarely, if ever, go into manual gain control mode to adjust gain, so leave it in auto and just have a play with the brightness and contrast rockers. Just doing some fine tuning on the targeting pod now that we are a little closer. At just under 15 nautical miles, I will initiate a point track by pressing TMS up with the targeting pod soy. The Maverick at this time will also attempt to lock whatever it is looking at due to the targeting pod being in auto handoff. With the weapon page soy, press and hold TMS up and slave the Maverick lock with the RDR cursor as close as you can to the target. Again, we are further than 8 nautical miles out and will unlikely get a lock. We will just wait in the meantime. Some more fine adjustment as we get closer. At 8.5 nautical miles, I will begin pressing TMS up to initiate locks. At 8 nautical miles, this ends up locking and I can hit the bore sight button to bore sight this Maverick. It is important to TMS aft before switching to the next Maverick. Again, slave the next Maverick over, holding TMS up and release over the target and hit bore sight then TMS aft. We will sway the targeting pod, then TMS down to initiate INR track, then TMS down once more to cursor zero back to our steer point one. Master arm is placed back to off, and we can at this point even turn the MAV display off in the SMS page as Mavericks can only stay on so long to begin with. We will now reference steer point two as that is our target location of a moving convoy along the famous Batumi Auxiliary Airfield. Now, we only bore sighted two Mavericks, but we have four. How come? We only need to bore sight each station, three and seven, and not each Maverick individually. So be wary if you are swapping Mavericks for some reason during a bore sight and skip to your next station and then back to your original. Here, I'm keeping the convoy in my targeting pod and planning how I want to approach this based on the direction they are moving.
rolling in here and now I have some good spacing between the convoy and still some good distance to begin my prep work. checking to see if Maverick still correlates, which it does. I'll initiate a point track and this is fine even though my Maverick does not lock. When in range with targeting pod soy, I can just TMS to the right to force the seeker to slave and relock to the next targeting pod location along my point track. Again, adjust brightness and contrast. TMS right at 8.5 nautical miles and looking for that lock. Above my selected station in the weapon page, you will see T for tracking and then C once the lock does happen for Corley. Rifle, and now I can immediately TMS down, then slew to the next target. TMS up, and the Maverick should lock. Rinse and repeat. Be warned if you slew and stop before doing a TMS aft on the targeting page, the Maverick will attempt to lock whatever the cursor stopped at. Just TMS aft, then slew. I will fire off all my remaining Mavericks and watch the chaos. And there on the targeting pod, the missile's coming in with four shacks. Good BDA. We will get a low pass in and pay our respects before moving on out. Yes, that was indeed good effect with my old Mark II eyeballs. We can RTB as we are mission complete. I'd like to thank each and every one of you for sticking around and watching. If you could do me a favor and either thumbs up, thumbs down, throw a comment, subscribe, and hit the bell, I would appreciate it. Also check out some of the other videos on the channel. I have other tutorials and I also record some single player missions as well as some multiplayer runs from casual groups to milsim. Thanks and see you next time guys.